Good morning and welcome to the Chapel Jonesboro Online. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here, and we're super excited about this morning's service. Do me a quick favor. Go in the bottom corner, click that share button, invite all of your friends, invite all of your family. Pastor has an amazing word this morning that God has given him. You don't want to miss it. Hey, at any point during this broadcast, you can give via Cash App. You go on Cash App and type in money sign the Chapel Jonesboro and sow your seed. If you're not tech savvy, you can mail your size and offerings to 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia. And at any point during the service or after the service, if this is your first time watching us or joining us live, you can scan the QR code or go to the chapeljonesboro.com and fill out a quick connection card. We want to know about you. We want to welcome you as a part of the Chapel family. Here very shortly, we're going to go into worship. It's going to be an amazing time. So share this stream. Get ready. God's about to show up and show out. Reaching beyond the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Now the sun is for real, you will never let go, never let go. Oh, and it's more than just words, love beyond my control, out of control. This is real love. This 
To your eyes makes my heart come alive. Suddenly, but tonight, when I miss you, one, two, three, jump. Changed my name. 
so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection Battle you won. I 
says I am and that he can do anything and everything, no matter our situation or no matter what it is we're going through, that he is undefeated in every aspect of your life, my life, and everything else that goes on. And I am thankful for that this morning. Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. You can all be seated for just a couple of minutes as we transition into this next portion of our service. This is where we're going to receive our offering. As we like to say around here, we're not asking you to give anything to God. We're asking you to place back into his hands what he has entrusted you with. We're not asking you to give. We're receiving what God has so graciously given to us today. I want to tell you about the ways that you can give here. If this is your first time at the chapel, you can give via Cash App. That is money sign, the Chapel Jonesboro. That's money sign, the Chapel Jonesboro. Or you can mail your tithes and offerings here to the church at 1565 Commercial Court. That's 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia. If you're here in-house, the ushers will be coming by in just a few minutes with the buckets. Or at the end of service, we'll have our giving kiosk at the double doors. We take all forms of major credit cards. We don't want to take anything away from God. We want to bless this house. We want to bless the kingdom. Yes. We want to do all of those things. Before I forget, our online community, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. If this is your first time here, drop in the chats that it's your first time. Yes. One of our connection team members will reach out to you. We just want to give you some information about the chapel and let you know what it feels like to be home. We yes. just want you to understand what it is to be home. Those of you that are in the house, if this is your first time, let us know. We're so thankful for everyone that takes the time and the opportunity to come into this house. Before we take up the offer, and I have a scripture that I'd like to read before I pray. And it's Malachi 3 and 10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I can tell you, I don't know about you, but that's my prayer right now. Yes. Is Father, let me be faithful. Let me put everything that you've asked me to put into the storehouse so that when you open up the floodgates of heaven, that I can't even imagine what it is you're going to pour out on me. But it's not just about me. Because when I'm faithful, he's faithful to the house. It's not just about how I get blessed individually. It's about how the church gets blessed. And when the church gets blessed, we're able to be a blessing outside of these four walls because we're not contained to just inside this building. We're to be outside these walls. And the only way we can do that is for us to be faithful and for us to put back into the kingdom what God has entrusted us with. If you'll all stand, I'll pray, and then we'll enter into worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now that we have the opportunity to plant seeds in fertile soil this morning, Lord. Father, we're not giving anything to you. We're returning back to you what it is you've entrusted us with this morning, Lord. Father, I ask that you bless every person in this building that has to give and those that have not, Lord, that they would begin to trust you and see how faithful of a God you are, that you will open up the heavens and you will pour out a blessing that they couldn't even imagine or they could ever understand. And in your name we pray, amen.
Amen. I believe everybody came into this building this morning with something they need God to answer in their life. And because of that, this next passage that we sing, that we call the bridge, it talks about sickness. If you have sickness in your body, God is good enough to take it. If you're addicted to something, God is good enough to help you with that addiction. If you need help and prosperity in your life, God is good enough to provide that. So let's sing that this morning together. You take our sickness and remove our disease. You take our weakness to be the strength that we need. You take our bondage and you unlock every chain to keep your promise over again and again. You take our sickness and remove our disease. You take our weakness to be the strength that we need. You take our bondage and you unlock every chain to keep the defeat someone that it is defeated already i speak to any attitude that it is placed under your feet this morning i speak to any agenda that's already aligned itself that it is defeated it is broken it is called down god i speak against anything that would come against your people that today god it is already moved out of the way every wall every obstacle every need has already been met now, God, this word you've given me this morning is for this hour, this time. But, God, I believe it's going to grow, go straighter than just this hour, God. It's going to be stronger than just for the time that we receive it now. 
But God, it's going to go days, years, months. It's going to go beyond what we can comprehend if we will just open our spirits this morning. Now, God, I ask you to open each and every one of us up in a way that only you can and move in this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Look around you. Greet someone. Tell them you're glad to see them here today. Come on, make them feel real. Make them feel like you're really glad to see them today. Like they just gave you $1,000. You know, it amazes me sometimes how we'll tell somebody, I'm so glad to see you, but in reality, we're really not glad to see them. But when the cable man shows up to fix our internet at our house, we're so glad to see them. But can I tell you something that if we would have that same mindset with Jesus, that same mindset with the Lord to say, God, I'm so glad to be in your house. That's what David was saying. He said, I was glad when they said, let's come into the house of the Lord. Mm. Mm. I have a word this morning that Many, many weeks, many months, it seems like months now, this word was shouted from the rooftops. And I began to ask God, give me a greater revelation of what's being shouted, God. Give me an understanding that I may give it in a way that your people will understand it. Because, you see, there's sometimes, it's kind of like disciplining a child. How many of you have ever had to discipline your children? And you're hollering off the chain at them, and they ain't got a clue what you're saying to them. Come on. So if you have your Bibles, your tablets, go to the book of Acts this morning, chapter 12. And when you get there, say, we're almost ready. Man, y'all are quick today. Acts chapter 12, verses 6 through 11. If you're really there, what's the first word in verse 6? <laughs> I got you then, didn't I? Acts chapter 12, verse 6 through 11. In verse 6, of Acts chapter 12, and it says this. It says, and when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, quickly and his chains fell off his hands then the angel said to him gird yourself tie on your sandals and he did and so he did and he said to him put on your garment and follow me I believe Peter was buck naked so he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real but Though, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard's post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered Delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. I want to ask you today, has God ever done something in your life so quickly, so abruptly, so, so uh, 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 amazingly that you almost had to ask yourself, is this a dream or is this real? Am I really experiencing what God is doing? Am I really in the moment? Is this what the Lord is doing? Has he already done it and I just haven't woken up yet my title today is wide awake how many times in the middle of the night have you just set up in the bed and you've been wide awake oh I got people shaking their heads there's people at home today that are viewing this and you're saying I got you I'm with you you see I'm wide awake. In other words, I'm not sleepy. I could nod back off. I couldn't go back to sleep because something has gotten my attention. And you see, today the scripture as I begin to read this, the Lord began to speak to me. And you see that Peter 
has made himself comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. I don't think he caught that. Peter has made himself comfortable. He has made himself comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. Can I tell you that there are a lot of us that has made ourselves comfortable in the way that we're living, comfortable in the way that we're believing, comfortable in the way that we do things, and we yet have seen God move because we're uncomfortable, we're comfortable in our own flesh when God is speaking to somebody today and he's telling you today, I'm about to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm about to shake you up a little bit. I'm about to loose you a little bit. I'm about to touch you on your side and let you know that I am the Lord. Lord, I'm about to bring you. You better get a hold of what I'm getting out to you this morning. I'm about to bring you from where you are to where I want you to be. I, there's an awakening in the body of Christ. And if somebody doesn't wake up, you're going to miss the opportunity that God is trying to speak to you today. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. He has made the uncomfortable work. He has made the uncertain of a resting place. Peter has. Peter has gone to bed between two soldiers, sleeping between the two soldiers whose assignment is to hold you where you are. Hmm. I want to tell you this morning, I, I am, I'm in a place this morning, some of you are going to be a little shaken when I give you what I'm fixing to give you. You see, there are spirits that have been assigned to your life whose only job is to hold you where you are to make sure that you don't move too far away from where they have put you. There are spirits that have been, have been assigned. Oh, somebody said not me. Let me tell you something. If you're saying not me this morning, they've already got the chains tied to you. They've already got you comfortable into something. But let me tell you something. Oh, we haven't felt it a long time in the body of Christ, but there is a conviction of the Holy Spirit of about to come upon the church. It's about to oh, somebody here this morning. It's about to become come upon the United States of America. We have become comfortable. We have become complacent. We have become settled. We have become used to. It's just another church service. But I am tired of having another church service. I am tired of coming into the house of God and singing three or four songs and saying that's all there is to God because I serve a God that can do the impossible. Oh, look at somebody and say, are you comfortable? Oh, come on. I grew up, they used to call that fat, happy, and dumb. Huh. Yeah, comfortable. You see, Oh, I told you this is going to be a little uncomfortable, didn't it? Did I warn you already? Anybody wide awake yet? You see, there are demonic forces, influences, that have been sent on an assignment to make you accept the unacceptable as acceptable, to make you accept the abnormal as normal. The uncertainness, oh, come on, somebody, this morning, as certain. They want you to go to bed in something that God wants to get you out of. Oh, you can tell I'm wide awake this morning. God wants to get you out of something that the enemy wants you to sleep in. God wants to move you away from something that the enemy wants to give you a pillow and make you go to sleep in. Hmm. God wants to pull you away from something that the enemy's trying to lure you into. And he has a sign. He has chosen spirits to make you accept the unacceptable, to make you rest in the uncertain, to lull you into, uh, here it is, the toxicity of sleep and slumber in a situation that God is about to get you out of. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house this morning. There's a giant, the last giant is a matter. 
matter of fact, his name was Gath, and he was the giant of sleep and slumber. The Bible says that he had one of the largest beds that there is. Can I tell you, we're in a season right now that the world is trying to lull the church to sleep. If you don't believe me, go back and look at the beginning of the pandemic. What was the first thing that they attacked? They attacked the church. They wanted to shut the church down. But I've got news for you. Oh, my Bible tells me the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Oh, somebody this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I feel God in this place this morning. What you're going through is just an, just an assignment of the enemy trying to put you to sleep. But God is telling me to tell somebody today that it's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to rise up. You've been letting everything else lull you off to the left and to the right. But God said when you open up your eyes and see what I'm doing for you, you'll never sleep like you slept before. Oh, y'all are quiet. Oh, either you're stunned or you're asleep. You see, oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. I said the enemy's trying to get you to go to sleep in the situation that God's trying to get you out of. The enemy's trying to make somebody think today that your life is over with, but God is about to get you out of it. The enemy's trying to make you think that God doesn't have another sermon. He doesn't have another song. He doesn't have another job. He doesn't have another message. He doesn't have another life. He doesn't have another love. He doesn't have another hope. The enemy's trying to make you go to sleep. Oh, God, but I feel the anointing in here today of the Holy Ghost because God is trying to get somebody to wake up. God is telling me to tell you today, I feel what I'm going to speak. Oh, hallelujah. You've been chained inside of a jail cell between two soldiers keeping you inside, and the angel showed up and got you out of it. And, and the Spirit is telling me to tell you today, stop going back inside and chaining yourself to something that God has walking you out of. God opened up a new door, not for you to go back to the old door. <sighs> Shall I be clear? He sets you free, but you go back and get some of the things that you liked when you were bound. Do I need to say it again? He sets you free. The chains fell off of you, but you go back and rechain yourself to something that binds you. God didn't loose you for you to tie yourself back up. Oh, if you could see your faces from here. One Sunday, perhaps I'll take the media department, have them take a camera and pan it on you and let you see it on the screen. Because you see, some of you are saying right now, that's exactly why I'm facing what I'm facing. Because I refuse to let everything go that was in the jail cell. I want to take it back to this life because there were some things that I had old life that I enjoyed. <laughs> oh, I felt comfortable then. You know, they loved me in that old life. And God says the only thing you're doing is living in the old life. You'll never live in the new life. You'll never live in the free because you're living in the, bond, the bound Oh, oh, look at somebody and say, wake up. Look at them again and say, I'm wide awake. Why are you sleeping? 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 Somebody needs to shake yourself this morning in this house. And you know somebody, hallelujah, I feel God today. You need to shake yourself. You need to shake yourself so much that you wake up and you become wide awake. You see, this is not your life. This is not your situation. This is not your go-to. This is not your default setting. This is not how you story ends. This is not how you give up. This is not how you die. I shall die, not die. I shall not. I shall live and not die today. Oh, no, no. Oh, somebody this morning. Woo. Woo. Mm. Oh, I can't wake up because I feel good sleeping. Mm. How many sleepers do I have in here this morning? 
<laughs> Some of y'all still asleep. Any given Sunday, I can count five people from up here that I look out and you're sound asleep. One Sunday, I'm going to ask the person beside you to shove you off the pew. I bet you wake up when you hit the floor. Uh, no, 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 no. You're going to wake up about 3 o'clock when you got to call me on the phone because you didn't hear what God was speaking to you in the house and you want me to re-preach a message to you. I'm tired of preaching to people when church is over with. If you can't get it while you're in the church, then perhaps you don't want it at all. You just Oh, somebody this morning, you asleep when God is trying to speak to you. You're asleep in everything you do when God is trying to tell you, I woke you up to get you up. I'm going to preach a little more. I'm only on page two of seven. That means it's going to get real, real. <laughs> real, real. Oh, oh, this isn't your situation. This isn't your default setting. <laughs> this is not how you give up. This is not how you die. And here Peter was. Peter was in a toxic environment of uncertainty, a toxic environment of anxiety, a toxic environment of worry, an environment of discomfort, and he was asleep. Can I tell you that's what those environments are designed to do? That toxic relationship is designed to keep you <laughs> That anxiety is designed to keep you that sickness is designed to keep you. That distraction is designed to keep you. That discomfort is designed to keep you. Well, I started out the first of the year praying and reading my devotions, but I, you know what? It just didn't work for me. So in three days, I give up on it. That's what that is designed to do is to tell you you'll never amount to anything. You'll never be anything. That's what the chains are designed to do for you. They're designed to keep you co conformed to the way that you feel comfortable. And the scripture says that the angel came in while he was asleep, walked in to his night. I, I got to say that again because some of you didn't get what I just said. The angel came in while he was asleep and walked in to his night. You see, somebody needs to understand that the angel's getting ready to walk into your night. He's getting ready to walk into your dark place. He's getting ready to walk into your uncertainty. Oh, I don't care how many hell uh, hounds that hell has that have been assigned to you. When God gets ready to get to you, God will come get you. Somebody need to hear this. And there's not a devil in hell that can stop God when God gets ready to come get you. The angel shows up in the prison cell. Do you hear me? In the worst of situations, God said when you're in the worst place you can be in, I will come get you. Get you out of it if you will get up when I tell you to get up if you will listen to me when I tell you to listen oh somebody this morning God's telling you right now you need to run and run as fast as you can but you're sitting there saying no I'm gonna look bad if I run no God said I got you out of the cell not to keep you chained up I got you out of it to say I'm free Woo, somebody say the angel's showing up oh I'm broke but the angel's showing up I'm depressed, but the angel is showing up. I've been in despair, but the angel is showing up. Oh, the Lord told me if I preach this word, it was going to be the word that woke somebody up today. The word that, oh, somebody today, tell somebody beside you, I'm awake now. I'm wide awake. <laughs> you see... The scripture. <laughs> you ever seen somebody so asleep you got to grab them and just. <laughs> when I was youth pastor, a lot of the youth are here. They're adults now and got children. Y'all getting to see what I tried to tell you before you had the kids, right? <laughs> Hello. But when they would go to sleep on me while I was, I didn't preach to them. I taught them. I equipped them. But if they went to sleep 
upon me while I was speaking to them, I would go out and pour a bottle of water right on their lap. <laughs> if I got any of those youth in here today that experience that water, pour it right on them. They jump up out of that chair. All that, like that song Pastor, Pastor Lee was singing, get up, get up, get up. They was getting up, getting up. <laughs> like some James Brown, I feel like busting loose. Oh, come on, y'all didn't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> but the scripture says that the angel shook Peter. I don't think you heard me. I said the angel shook Peter. Somebody needs to be hollering right now, shake me. Oh, come on, somebody this morning. Shake me. Whatever you got to do to move me out of this situation, shake me up. My father-in-law, when he used to preach, I'll never forget it. He would step down, and I'm not going to come down because the cameras won't stay with me, but he would walk up to you, and this is uh, my, my hand before the Lord, isn't it, Sister Brian? He would walk up to you, and this is what he would say. He would say, the Lord told me to shake you, and I never understood. I thought it was theatrics going on, but let me tell you what it was. It was God telling him that I need you to get up and I'm going to shake you till you get up. You see, there's somebody in this house today. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You need some shaking inside of your life. Oh, you want everything to be comfortable. You want to be chained and content. But God said, I'm about to shake you. Mm. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, but we live in a world. That, oh, I'm not going to sing that song. Shake it. Shake it fast. See there? I, I know all your music. Don't think I don't know it. But you see, that's the problem. The shaking you got going on is by the shaking that you're comfortable in. And you become comfortable in something when God says, I'm trying to wake you up from what's shaking you. And somebody needs to be hollering today. Whatever you got to do, God, to move me out of this situation, shake me up. Shake me till I stop accepting a prison to be an apartment. Shake me till my faith is renewed. Shake me till my soul catches a fire again. Shake me till I get my fight back, God. Shake me till I get my sword back, God. Shake me. Oh, somebody, sometimes some things are going to happen in your life that you don't understand. Perhaps it could be God shaking you. But you see, God is not going going to shake you when you keep going back and chaining yourself to something he's just shook you a loose from. I dare somebody, if, if you'll wait, give him 30 seconds of praise in this place. One, two, three, seven, nine, ten, eleven. That's 15 seconds and you don't even act like you'll wait. That's 15 seconds, and you don't even act like you've heard anything. I want somebody to give God some shaking praise in this place this morning. Some shaking praise in this place this morning. Some shaking praise to get in this house this morning. I want God to, oh, I want you to give him some praise like he's just shook you up. I want you to look at the person beside you and tell them this morning, you ain't awake. Maybe I need to shake you a little bit. Go ahead. Put your hands on them. Put your hands on them and shake them. Shake them. Oh. Let me tell you what I feel the Holy Ghost doing in this house this morning. I feel him dropping water down from heaven on some folks that are asleep this morning. I feel him waking up somebody that's about to give up. I feel him pulling up somebody that's been pushed down. I feel him loosening somebody that's been chained up too long. I feel him moving in somebody's finances today. I feel him opening up a prison door that you couldn't open. Oh, you better get what I'm telling you this morning because nothing happened in this text until Peter woke up. 
nothing. You see, the presel, presence of an angel didn't stop the problem. Because the angel was stronger than all the 16 guards. But the presence of the angel did not liberate the apostle. The only thing that will liberate, that is set you free, is when you wake up. Oh, somebody holler, I'm awoke now. I'm wide awake. You see, I used a country term on you then. I'm awoke now. No, 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 no. In the country, we say woke up. Are you woke up yet? Huh? Oh, all these grammar, these English people, they, they, they got good grades. I failed English. You looking at somebody, every other class was A's and B's, but F was English. I graduated 12 years and a quarter because I had to go to summer school to get through English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? I didn't stop because I failed. I knew there was something that had to be done. You see, that's the problem with some of us. We want to stop because we failed the first time. We want to stop because we really don't believe that he set us free. <laughs> oh, somebody today. You see, you, you got to say, I'm awake. I'm wide awake. Oh, I was depressed, but I'm wide awake now. I was frustrated, but I'm wide awake now. Oh, I was hung up, but now I'm wide awake. I was troubled, but now I'm wide awake. I didn't know what to do, but now I'm wide awake. I didn't know how to walk, but now I'm wide awake. I didn't know how to get out of this thing, but now I'm wide awake. What that is saying is now, God, I know that you're going to do what you said you're going to do. I'm going to not stay where I'm at. I'm going to let go. You see, that's our problem. You want to put the chains on when God keeps pulling them off. Oh, let me tell you, human nature says I'll deal with it tomorrow. Perhaps, mm, this is going to sting. Perhaps we need to start with our cell phones. And if you got contacts from a last season, and you're still contacting the last season, then you'll never walk in this season God's called you to walk in because you want the last season to go with this season. But God says, no. Oh, well, I like them. Let me tell you something. How much do they, do they like you enough to come to church on Sunday? Huh? Do they like you enough to put some positive posts on your page on Facebook? Do they like you enough to come to you and say, your lights is out and I want to pay your bill? No, they don't like you because they're not in the season that you're in. They're still chained on the other side of the jail cell that God has set you out of. And Oh, you better be careful how you do that because when God sets you free of something and you drag something behind you into what he sets you free in, you're contaminating the freedom that he's given to you and you're saying, I don't believe you bless me. Here's what you're saying. I did it on my own. I did it on my own. I did it on my own. Wide awake. I got to take you somewhere and I got to get you out of here. Peter wakes up. This is the most important part of the message to me. But Peter wakes up in stages. You see, the Bible says that the angel woke him up. And the moment that the angel woke him up, he said to Peter, he said, hurry, get up. And the moment he said that to Peter, Peter still hadn't said anything. Peter didn't say one word, but what happened? The chains fell off. Hmm. You see, the angel... I found this interesting. Spoke loud enough to Peter, but quiet enough that the guards didn't hear him. Hmm. So you see, God's speaking to you and not the person beside you. Perhaps. He's already revealed to you what you should do, but you're wanting him to reveal it to you and the person beside you so you can get confirmation from the person beside you. But as I recall, the scripture said he spoke to Peter. He spoke loud enough to him. You see, what God has for you and all the wannabes that are hanging around you, 
they can't get what God has for you. Come on, I used to have some friends, I, uh, say, Pastor Sabre called them flockers. Flockers. Birds of a feather flock together. And I had a lot of those feather flockers. <laughs> yeah. And all they wanted was the bird feed. Come on. You, you hear what I'm telling you this morning? All they wanted was uh, the cold beer that they knew I would have. All they wanted was the thought that I had in my head how to fix their car. All they wanted was the benefit and not the friendship. They wanted the benefit without the commitment. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? There's some folks in here this morning. There's some people that's wanting all the benefits, but they're not wanting any of the commitments. They're wanting, oh, come on, somebody need to help me preach this morning. You see, because if you will wake up, you will realize that they're trying to get your benefits and not give you no commitment. I got about five people here this morning that got what I'm saying. You see, you're, you're, you're where you're at because you're giving the benefits and and they're not giving the commitment. Hello. Hello. Can I be a little more real as I continue on this morning? Well, she ain't putting out. She's getting out. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Because that's really all you want. You want to use them until you can't use them anymore, and then you want to loose them until you can get something else that you can tie up in the same trap that you tied the last one up in. And God is saying that is not of God. Oh, come on. Come on, uh, come on, ladies. Oh, he looks good. That's a, he's a good man right there. Let me tell you, good doesn't make him just because he looks good. Let me, t- let me help some folks this morning. If all you're going on is looks, maybe you need to get an ugly one. Trying to make yourself happy with the way things look. The angel said, hurry up, get up. The chains fell off of Peter's hands. And the scripture says immediately. Somebody say immediately. Because that's what's wrong with a lot of us is our response. Uh, I'm going to do it later. Immediately, Peter got up. And this is the thing that you have to realize. This is important for you to understand. Uh, You always wake up in stages. You fell asleep in stages. Come on. Mm. Mary Cosper, I got to come hug you, but I can't do it right now. I missed my hug this morning. That just hit me. When you go to bed at night, how many do I have here that can just lay down in your sleep just like that? Give me some of that. Hmm. But there's stages that you go to sleep in. You may go straight to sleep, but then you may wake up after you've gone straight to sleep. You may have a few minutes of rest, and then the next thing you know, you're wide awake, and you have to do something, then come back and lay down again. But yet, it's the same way when you wake up in the mornings as well. How many of you, again, have children in here? Have you ever gotten them up in the morning, and they're just as chipper as can be? Or have you ever gotten them up in the morning, and they just don't want you to look at them or talk to them or say anything? I'm one of those uh, 50, I don't know how old I am, but I'm good enough, uh, one of those individuals that I really don't like to speak to people until about 9 o'clock. Don't look at me. Don't stare at me. I may get up at 7 o'clock, but don't look at me till 9 o'clock because I'm still in one of those stages. You see, that was the deal with Peter. Peter was in one of those stages when the angel came inside to wake him up. The chains fell off, and Peter was in such a stage that he didn't even know that the chains were off of him. He thought he was still in the same spot. You see, what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that some of you are in that stage today The chains have already fallen off of you, but you're in a stage that you don't believe that they're off of you. And God is telling me to tell you today that some of you need to look down and see that you're loosed, see that you're free, see that you're healed, see that you're delivered, and hurry up and get out of where you're at. (sighs) He woke up. Somebody say woke up. He woke up. 
And the scripture says that Peter followed the angel out. But can you put that text back up there for me? Thank you, guys and ladies. He followed the angel out. But before he followed him out, oh, come on, he wasn't sure what was happening. He didn't know what had went on. He followed him out of the prison not knowing that he had followed him out of the prison. Are you with me now? You see, uh, uh, because somebody's saying, right, well, I thought he was awake, Pastor. He was awake, and he was following the angel. He was following the angel not knowing. Did you catch that? Not knowing. That's why you can't have a lot of people asking you a lot of questions because sometimes you could be following the angel and not knowing that you're awake. <laughs> oh, he's in front of you. You're following him. But I can't answer any questions because I'm not knowing. And you see, Peter thought he was seeing a vision. <laughs> you see, that means that his dream and his reality have collided so much that you don't want to know if your dream is real or not. Oh, come on. Oh, it's that word, is this too good to be true? How many times have we said that? This is just too good to be true. Can I tell you that 50% of the time, that too good to be true is really too good to be true? And perhaps you have convinced yourself that what you're in is truth, but yet it is a lie? I'm happy. Oh, come on. You settle for where you're at because you do have told yourself, this is where I need to be. You never experience true happiness until you experience that that is brought from God. Not from an individual. Let me just help you this morning. Those old famous words, I hear them all the time. He completes me. She completes me. Well, let me tell you something. If God hasn't completed you, then he or she sure ain't going to complete you. All they're doing is pacifying what you feel is complete in your life. All they're doing is keeping you chained inside of a prison cell. Oh, somebody says it could be a fantasy. It could be a vision. You believe it. Uh, watch this. But you don't know it. You believe it, but you don't. There's a difference between believing something and knowing something. So, Peter's believing it, but he doesn't know it. He's thinking now. He doesn't know. His spirit doesn't know. His mind thinks, could it be a vision? Why is that so? Here it is, because you wake up in stages. It takes a while for you to fully wake up to what God's doing in your life. Have you ever gotten in a car and drove somewhere and didn't even remember driving there? Perhaps you wasn't awake to the trip you were taking, but yet you knew where you needed to go. But you didn't wake up until the reality of that you got there was in front of you. Did that make sense? Was I clear in that what I said this morning? Try not to confuse you because I got people that you're soaking this in right now. Because the scripture says, for we walk by faith and not by sight, right? You don't see it, but you're walking in it. You don't know it, but you're walking in it. And God's bringing you out of it, but you're afraid to trust it because you feel that it's not real. And you got to listen to this next part. I'm getting ready to close for the first time. You see, I've had people ask me over the years, when God delivered me from alcohol, y'all have heard that testimony. When did you know that you were coming out of this? When did you know that this was really taking place? When did you know that this was all what it was? My response to them was, I knew the night that I went down and asked the Lord to deliver me. I knew that night. But deliverance has to be walked. Deliverance has to be believed. You see, that's why we're stuck in some of the things we're stuck in. Deliverance has to understand that God has taken the chains off and that we are able, we are able to be free. We are able to walk. You see, it's kind of like being called to pastor or preach. The Lord called me many, many years before I ever stepped up and spoke from a microphone, a pulpit, or the floor, or anywhere else. The Lord called me because I knew that he called me, but there was a season that that called 
calling would come to fruition, you see. And somebody said, well, pastor, y'all are doing so good at the chapel now. Everything is going great right now. You know, you had some failed ministries. No, 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 no. I had some ministries that the chains were taken off, and I had to walk in that season loosed and try to figure things out. And you see, some of us don't yet understand that. Well, pastor, I don't know how you're going to do it. He's over there in a funeral home. He'll never be anything. Give him six months. Give him a year. He's washed up. He's done. But let me tell you, unless you're willing to preach in a funeral home where the people that are sitting in the chairs are as dead as the people that are in the back of the place, you're never going to be able to preach to somebody that is alive. But God kept saying, keep going. Keep going. I've taken the chains off of you. I've set you free. Oh, you with me now? You got to be willing to follow the angel not knowing, right? Still uncertain, awake, but not fully awake. You got to trust the one in front of you who knows what he's doing while you're still uncertain because you wake up in stages. I want to tell somebody today, you don't know who you are yet. You might have a clue, but you wake up in stages. Can y'all pull up that 10th verse of my scripture for me this morning? I should have clarified all this earlier, but you know, I'm stuck in what I'm given. And when he starts to wake up, they pass by the first guard post and the second, and then they come to the iron gate leading into the city. And the scripture says, the gate actually says, which opened to them of its own accord. Huh. Okay, so I visited you in the middle of your problem. I visited you in your circumstance. I shook you. I told you to get dressed. I told you to put on your robe, your cloak. I told you to put that on. And then I, told, I loosed the chains and I sent you out of there. But you had to follow me. And that wasn't enough for you, Peter. That wasn't enough for what I was doing. You. That wasn't enough to get you where you needed to go. So I got you to the city that was gated inside. I got you to the place that you couldn't get out of, and I opened what you couldn't open. That angel, that same angel, I said it earlier, was capable of killing 16 soldiers and didn't kill any of them. They walked right past them. I want to talk to somebody this morning that's walked past stuff that could have killed you. Oh, come on. God lets you just walk right past it. I wish I had a witness here this morning. That car wreck that you could have been in, that accident that could have hit you head on. Oh, come on, that overdose that could have killed you. Do you hear me this morning? That abusive relationship that could have took you out. God said, no, 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 I, I love you enough not to keep you in it. You see, somebody here this morning, you don't really recognize what God has brought you from. You really don't recognize what he's brought you and set you loose from because you want to hang on to what you've been loose from. But God said, I've done this in your life. And you see, when you begin to realize that God has done these things, then there's not a gate that can keep you out. There's there's not an obstacle that can keep you out. There's not anything that man can front of you can put in front of you that can keep you out of it. Some of you today are stuck where you're at because you're not willing to see that the gate that he has for you is already open. You're wanting to stay inside. It's like cattle on a farm. Once those cattle are trained to stay in that field, you can leave the gate open and they will not come out. Because... They've been trained to stay caged. Huh. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Jay, you know about this. When you have a cattle farm, there's these bars that go in the ground right up under the gate. And you can leave that gate open, and they won't step because there's a crack between those bars. Their feet are wide enough to go across it, but if they see the crack, they see the spot in there, they won't tread across it because they feel like that that wouldn't be good for them and they could get their hoof 
stuck in it. You see, some of you, God has opened up the gate, but you're looking down at the crack of what could be or the crack of what it's been or the situation of where I've been or the problem that I've faced before. It's never going to change. But God says, if you don't recognize the gate is open, you're not going to recognize the freedom that I've given you inside of captivity. There's someone here this morning. God is trying to tell you he's given you the ability to get out of where you're at. He's already loosed you. He's already set you free. He's already made a way. He's already already done everything that you have need of. Oh, they should have killed you. They passed by the first guard post. They passed by the second. They came to the iron gate that led to the city. You see, that iron gate was the demarcation between ideas and reality. It's an iron gate. What had you locked in was an iron gate gate. That's what was in front of Peter in the jail cell was an iron gate. But by the time you get to it, by the time you get, oh, don't worry about the fact that it hasn't opened yet. You see, that's the problem that some of us face in our own life. We're worried because we don't see the opening when God says, I need you to walk to it. And as you get in front of it, I'll make a way where there is no way. Somebody here this morning, you need to be praising God right now because you're trying to figure this thing out. You're looking at the gate, but the gate's already open. The gate that had you locked inside is already open. But by the time you get to it, you won't, you won't see it because it will have already opened in advance. And the Holy Ghost said, by by the time you get to it, by the time you get to it, oh yes, I'm talking right now to somebody in this house or somebody that's watching today. By the time you get to it, you walk up on it. God said it's, he's already arranged it. It's going to open up. He said what was locked and what was immovable has now been opened. What has been holding you back has now been opened. The thing you've been praying for and speaking for, you haven't received it because you don't believe enough to step in front of something that's close and see it as though it's already open. It's going to open by itself. I wish whoever got that would just give God praise for about 10 seconds. Help me out this morning. Let me get a swallow of water. Come on. I think you believe a little better than that. Oh, I think you need to catch what I'm going to tell you here the next time. The gate just opened. Peter didn't get credit for it. That's kind of how it is, isn't it? We do something we want credit for it. Oh, I gave the church $10,000. Oh, help me. Somebody give church $10,000 today. I'll let you take credit for it. Go ahead. I'll let you testify next Sunday. Write the check. No, no, no. Don't write the check. Put it on cash out. We can't take that much. Bring the cash to the church. I'll let you take credit for it, but you need to understand, you only got that 10000 because there's a God in heaven that owns every bit of it. And he said he would make that way. He would open up the gate. He would do that that he said he would do for you if you would just believe. Stop accepting the jail cell when there's freedom outside. Wide awake. Wide awake. Wide awake. That door's about to open in your life. Oh, don't tell me about your circumstance. You see, that's why you don't recognize the door, because you recognize the problem, your situation. You recognize the crisis, but you don't recognize the Christ that is in the middle of the crisis. You see, oh, it's kind of like, don't tell me what the devil said. He's speaking to somebody right now. No, 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 no. That door's about to open. Huh. God's about to blow somebody's mind in this place. He said, if you'd give him some Holy Ghost praise, in this house, if you stand to your feet this morning. I want to do something as we close today. This is totally different than what we've ever done in this church. Y'all know I love altar. You know I love to praise and I love to worship as well. I want you to do a mental evaluation. Hmm. I want you just to evaluate yourself a minute. And I want you to ask yourself, what is my biggest obstacle today? What am I facing today that I don't know how to get through it? And when you get that, here's what I want you to do. I want you to speak to that obstacle. 
or that situation or circumstance, then I want you to say, I'm not chained anymore. I'm not focused on you anymore. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm awake. I'm wide awake. And God, how do I stay awake? By giving you praise and giving you glory. How do I get through what I'm getting through? Let me tell you something. Lucifer was the most beautiful angel that there was. Was. You heard that, didn't you? That's past tense. It's done. <laughs> he knew music like nobody's business. Why do you think we got so much music in today's world that catches people? <laughs> you know, when I was a lot younger, I'm sorry, young folks, y'all not even going to remember this. Some of y'all do because it's kind of back in style. And we'd take a 45, that's a record, not a gun, and put it on that record player. Come on. Y'all remember them yellow things that used to go down in the center? <laughs> Kept that big hole centered on that little post, that little yellow looking thing. And they had a thing, what they call back masking. And what you could do is play the record backwards. And you would begin to hear words out of that song that you've never heard before. Same way with cassette tapes. Play it in the same mode and you all of a sudden would begin to hear things inside of that tape. And let me tell you, Lucifer's smart. So what he's done now is he's taken the society we live in. And he's convinced the society that anything and everything goes. Let me tell you something. If God is not in your anything and your everything, then nothing goes. Nothing goes. <laughs> I'm tired of people pointing their, feet, their fingers at people, men and women of God, and saying they shouldn't be doing this or they shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't be singing. They shouldn't be worshiping. They shouldn't be interceding. They shouldn't be in the house of God. They don't need to be in there. Let me tell you something. Those very people need to get under conviction and get on their face before the Lord and say, God, change my heart, O oh Lord. Change my heart, O oh Lord. sure I gave a pretty thought-provoking message this morning. Because here it is. If it hasn't provoked you to go back into your mind and say, okay, was I set free and did I not walk in it? Was I delivered and I didn't walk in it? Uh, I'm healed and I'm not walking in it? Our church mother, Linda Graham, let me tell you something. When I had all that kidney stuff going on, they diagnosed me with a mass over one whole kidney, one side. Couldn't see it. The other kidney, I think they said it was three tumors. It's been so long. I was in constant pain. I wouldn't take pain medication. Wouldn't take none of it. I take ibuprofen or Advil. That's all I take. But every Sunday, that woman of God walked into the house. And before I got ready to preach, right in the center of my back, There was some Sundays I wanted to lay her on the back. Every Sunday she did that. Every Sunday. And when she did it, she said, you are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. You're not sick. You don't have kidney problems. You don't have what the doctor says. You don't have pain. You don't have fear. She began to rebuke what I couldn't rebuke. Do you hear what I'm telling you? And it wasn't long, do you hear me, that the next thing you know, the pain was gone. The next thing you know, my bodily functions had come back. The next thing you know, I go to the doctor. Nothing fell on the left, nothing found on the right. Why? Because that healing took place. I began to walk in what she spoke. Walk in what she spoke. What are you walking in? What are you walking in? Oh. You broke because you're walking in. you're walking in. You dug yourself a hole so deep 
but yet you're not willing to say, I might have dug it, but I know a God that can get me out of it and I won't dig it again. You're walking in fear because you allow fear to walk you. You're walking in worry because worry dominates your mind. So the altars are open this morning. And whatever you're walking in, you can walk it up here, but you can walk out like Peter. You can walk out free. You can walk out loose. You can walk out healed. You can walk out whole. You can walk out delivered. You can walk out with a clear mind. You can walk out with your heart moving like it's never moved before again in your life. You can walk out with a peace that passes all understanding. Somebody is home today. God is moving in your house today. You've been under great stress, great amount. God said to speak to your stress today. Speak to your problem today. Oh, come on. I see mountains being pushed over into the sea. I see situations being pushed yeah. over into the sea. You're tied up with something you don't need to be tied up with. Today's your day to cut the cord on it. We hope you had as just as good of a time in service today as we did. God really showed up and showed out. If you have been blessed by today's message, don't forget to give using the giving methods that we talked about earlier in service. And also share this with your friends. We love you and we hope you have a blessed day.